Ivy League schools don't exactly equal baseball factories. However, one St. Lucie Met is making us rethink that equation. With an economics degree from Princeton, Matt Bowman is seeing his stock rise faster than just about any prospect in the Mets organization this season. Recently, I had a chance to sit down with Matt. We tried to find an equilibrium between his past pursuits and his bright future in baseball. Your performance since your initial IPO into the St. Lucie market has been uh, fairly impressive, but what's it been like behind the scenes being the, uh, the new kid in school, essentially? Um, it's, been, it's been all right, you know? Uh, all the guys are nice, so I've come in and uh, took them a little while to warm up to me. Apparently, I didn't know that in spring training, they, they didn't like me very much, but... No, they, well, they didn't tell me until they started, until they admitted that they liked me now. I, I don't know, apparently I did too much, too much running, too much extra stuff, needed to just settle down. I go, I go run somewhere else where no one can see me. After recognizing your sustainable growth, uh, you were promoted from Savannah here to St. Lucie. But honestly, what's it like to actually sit down and get the news that you're taking the next step? I'll be honest. I I almost thought they were kidding when they uh, when they told me I was moving up. I was before the season started. I was hoping to be a starter in Savannah, and I thought that was a stretch. I personally think that Savannah is loaded with pitching talent and other talent, um, and I didn't think I would be the first one to first one to start moving up. And I also didn't think that anyone would be moving up that early that early in the year. And when they told me I was moving up, I was more than a little bit surprised. You're a former All Ivy shortstop but after running a cost-benefit analysis, it was determined that your greatest rate of return would be yielded as a pitcher. So what do you miss most about uh, being an everyday player out there? Um, mostly it's just that you get to contribute to the game, to the team on an everyday basis versus pitching now. I don't exist other than every six days. And if you have a bad outing, you, you hurt the team in the one day you're supposed to, uh, supposed to be able to perform. So. It's just not getting to get out there that much and sort of sitting back and watching and waiting your turn. Much has been made of your delivery. So where did it come from? And yeah, pitching coaches along the way tried to tweak it or have they kind of taken a laissez-faire approach to it? Um, it's a little bit, I've heard a lot of the Lincecum comparisons. I'm, I'm a pretty small righty and he's a pretty small righty and he was throwing like 95. I was pretty impressed and I was like, well maybe I could do that and uh, mimic some of it and get get a few more miles per hour on the fastball. Um, and then I realized after a while that he's way more athletic than I am. So it's not gonna work, but some of, some of the things that I tried to incorporate I've kept because they, they feel right and they work, they work well. You've been uh, fairly lights out to start the season and clearly been enjoying the diminishing returns due to the inelastic approach of Florida State League hitters who have been in quite the state of hystericis when facing you. What independent variables can we deduce are responsible for this early season success? I mean, so far it's been the catchers calling a good game and uh, the, the position players fielding and making plays and getting runs. and. From there, I just uh, every like I was saying, you only get to exist every six days as a starting pitcher. So I try to just not make sure that I don't I don't waste it. So there have been some outings where I've given up three runs in the first three innings, and I'm sitting down, I'm thinking, okay, you can either just keep on this path and give up six runs, or you can just press the reset button now and make sure you get back on track and try and get deep into the game. I thought I was just sitting down for an interview. You're giving me life lessons now, man. Yeah, it's inspiring. Yeah.